Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this episode, information on the Nova One pre-order, uh, the new Senkut Wachuga, and my top 15 USA-made folders. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this last week was from Thursday Night Knives when we had Ben Belkin on the show. A uh, Plains Crafter, uh, Ben Belkin is of Jack Wolf Knives, by the way. Uh, Plains Crafter said, watching late, but I agree with Bob about the spay blade. I'm sorry if others... <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry if others have mentioned this, but the Benchmade 940 isn't far from a spade blade. Just call it a reverse modified Tanto foot and people will buy it. I, I thought that was interesting. So the conversation uh, was about uh, when Jack Wolf Knives comes back around in the next year or the next uh, production season and starts putting different blades on the handles uh, that they have already design, which uh, Ben plans on doing. And I asked, what about the spade blade? And he said, I love the spade blade, but I just don't think it'll be a big seller. So here, uh, Plains Crafter is saying the spade blade looks so much like a 940, and this is not a 940. Sorry, I don't have one, but uh, it's a similar shaped blade. So here's a spay, and then, and then a 940-esque reverse Tonto style blade. And uh, Plains Crafter was was saying that you simply change the shape of the spay a little bit, maybe drop that clip down, and you'll have something approximating a 940, which people will buy. So I think this was Plains Crafter's uh, way of lobbying for the spay blade to bend directly. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen, at least not the next time around, Plains Crafter. But thanks for the comment. And uh, yeah, I too love the spay blade and think that, uh, you know, just in noodling around with spay blades in drawings, uh, you can take them to pretty cool places, aggressive places. Uh, okay, so that is that for the comment of the week. Uh, I think now it's time for a pocket check. Today, uh, in my front right pocket, riding shotgun or dagger, if you will, is the Arcane Designs Antimatter. Uh, this is a double-edged dagger. This is a flipping dagger. Not too many of them out there. And um, I absolutely love this design. I love this knife. It's Riot made. I don't have too many knives made by Riot. Uh, you do have to be careful when closing it. And you probably have to be careful with your local laws on this one as it's double-edged and uh, a lot of jurisdictions get real uptight about double edge uh, for some reason uh, you know i don't worry about it too much um, when i'm not out and about and when i am out and about i i also don't worry about it too much uh, but this thing is not one that i carry often um, though i do love it the pocket clip is so cool if you look at the pocket clip you can see that it it has a motif on it like um one of those electrical um, sort of Tesla coil things on it. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see it right there. Uh, I like it. There's a very futuristic vibe to this and all arcane designs. Um, and I just, I don't know. It also has a sort of old school coffin shape. Uh, but really, the reason I got this thing is because there are not too many uh, double-edged daggers out there that fold. I can think of three, and two of them are out of reach. The Hinderer uh, Maximus, which you just cannot find, and they don't seem to be wanting to make other uh, new batches of them. And then uh, the, the Arch Nemesis by Sharp by Design, which is I have called the perfect folder before. I love that thing. Uh, but uh, this is right up there uh, with those two. As a matter of fact, I like this one better than the Hinderer, uh, though though I'm not saying I don't want that. What did I use this for today? Absolutely everything. It was my appreciation knife, and uh, though I did not cut anything with it. Um, okay, next up today, I had the Javelina Jack on me from Jack Wolf Knives. This is, this is the knife that did uh, the food prep today. 
the office food prep that is uh in the kitchen i use kitchen knives like any normal human being uh this is one of the few micarta versions here uh they they have uh, as what i what i mean is this is the one micarta version of the five that were released here as They've been going along. Ben has seen that people are eschewing micarta in lieu of the like drop dead gorgeous fat carbon and camo carbon he's been featuring on these. And I see why there is there has been a preponderance of micarta in the market. And that has made me happy, no doubt. Uh, but, you know. I guess people are getting micarta fatigue and they see this that luscious uh, carbon fiber he puts on his knives and they and they go for that. I am uh, thrilled and honored that he sent me one of the last, uh, you know, micarta models uh, for a while. And uh, this one is really, really nice quality micarta. I would say all of the micarta on the Jack Wolf knives have been excellent, but this seems a step above to me. Um, so really like this knife very ergonomic very comfortable and that beautiful california clip with the high with a full height s90v hollow grind is just you know wickedly sharp and effective speaking of wickedly sharp and effective the nova one was on my hip today this is my collaboration knife with hog tooth, tooth knives and uh right up coming after uh, the pocket check we're going to talk about the pre-order very exciting news about the pre-order for this knife but this has been on my waist uh non-stop since i got it a few weeks back this prototype i show it in the sheath because the sheath is excellent uh ships with the with this um uh, discrete carry concepts clip which i love these small ones uh clips onto the pants or over a nylon belt i wouldn't do it over my leather belts uh, but really nice control with the small one because you can angle it and tilt it um, to me much better than the larger ones, which lock further down the seam of your pants or further down over your belt completely. This one I tend to like to uh, turn as the day goes, to, depending on where I'm sitting. Anyway, so great sheath, a little push off point, And then there is the knife. Uh, a beautiful knife. And I feel like I have license to say this because this is really, this is Matt. Chase's platform. I just designed the blade for this. As you know, for the past couple of years, I've been carrying his EDC Tonto, which has the same handle and the same blade length. An amazing, amazing knife. Um, and I thought it was so amazing. I wanted to see different blade shapes on it. Um, so I could always be carrying that uh, a knife on that platform. It's just the perfect size uh, for carry. That's a three and a half inch blade and about a three and a half inch handle. It fits perfectly. Um, in the waistband without stabbing into the ribs and such. So I wanted a Bowie naturally. I'm, I'm a big Bowie fan and I designed this blade with a slight recurve and uh, he, he executed it perfectly and beautifully. A uh, couple of things will change from this prototype. The jimping here will move uh, towards the swedge so that your thumb lands on it instead of being back here. Uh, the red liners are going to be a deep green and we're going to keep, uh, all of them will be this polished maroon micarta, linen micarta, my favorite handle material. And then uh, and then the logo, the Knife Junkie logo will be much smaller to, to sort of be in keeping with Hogtooth, the Hogtooth logo on that side. So it will fit on the flat there. Uh, this being my prototype, I love having the logo big. We can put it on there five or six times and I'd love it. <laughs> uh, but this is this is pretty much how it's gonna ship with those couple of tweaks there. That's 154 CM blade steel acid stone wash and just a killer, killer sharp knife. So keep your eyes peeled in a couple of minutes. I'll tell you about the pre-order. Okay, uh, lastly on me today for emotional support, one that I haven't carried in a little while, um, and that's the Synapse by uh, Vero Engineering. This thing is a beautiful design, beautiful blade. Uh, everything about this is so nice and it's put together and you know built by best tech who just you know how i feel about them i love best tech this is an example of some kind of janky micarta i gotta say um it's canvas and it has never even with copious amounts of oil it's like it was uh i don't know it's like it was sanded down to a level where it's only glue or it's only epoxy and not much of the fabric and it does not 
it, it, it will just never darken up. This side is nice. The, the eclipse side is really nice. Nice cut of my card. I'm wondering if this is the backside or something. I don't know if that's, if that, if there even is a backside on my card, but um, in any case, this, that's not why I love this knife. I love this knife for the design, that really minimal clip and the just incredible buttery action. Um, so yeah, Vero engineering synapse. This is one of the older ones uh, with the, before he uh, changed the clip, changed the ramp of the clip and, and made it less extreme. So you don't feel it in the palm of your hand. A great carry today. I got lots in my car in my life. I could get, I guess I can see why people are, <clears throat> are gravitating towards uh, a variety of handle materials because there's a lot of my card out there and I see, I'm always seeking it out. But this is what I had on me today. Uh, the Arcane Designs Antimatter, the Jack Wolf Knives Javelina Jack, the uh, Knife Junkie Hogtooth Knives Nova One, and the Vero Engineering Synapse for emotional support. Let me know what you had on you today. Drop that down in the comment and uh, just let me know. Simple, simple uh, one knife message could could do the trick or you can write a paragraph you do what you got to do uh but let me know what you're carrying it's always good inspiration for me uh next up a gentleman junkie knife giveaway that's tomorrow night um uh is the on february 16th 2023 is the qsp penguin plus a beautiful you like the penguin you like the penguin do you uh, a great work knife that was uh featured in my list last week for great work knives. Well, this is takes all of that greatness, but upgrades it to 20 CV blade steel, titanium frame lock, flipper on bearings, nice and thin, no weight relief because it's not needed. It's nice and thin. And um, <clears throat> 20 CV tie. Oh, and it's larger. It's the plus. So that's a three and a half inch blade. And, or actually, what is this? One, two, three. At a, at a, almost a half so 3.4 inch blade or so really nice action on this um and so you got uh, the flipper you got the thumb studs you got all of that qsp penguin utility but in a really nice classy package uh all you got to do is become a gentleman junkie on patreon just go to the knifejunkie.com slash patreon if you want to support uh and do it like that. Now, I, I really appreciate it if you do. And if you don't, I just really appreciate your being here, watching, listening, and uh, being a part of the comments and just being a part of the conversation. Because uh, if if you're not, then that means I'm talking to my wife and daughters about this stuff. And, you know, I just don't need to be doing that to them. And uh, I don't need the eye rolls. I don't need any more eye rolls in my life. Okay. Uh, I was talking about patrons. Uh, I want to talk about something else before we move on, and that is the Nova One. Yes, I was just talking about it, um, but the pre-order of this uh, will be open on this very same day. This beautiful knife can be all yours. You just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Nova One, and there it takes you right to a page where you can uh, jump on the pre-order. Uh, they are $275 per knife. And uh, I have it on good word from Matt Chase that we will he will be able to have 50 made by August. Uh, so starting the pre-order now, um, that is uh, what you can expect. I hope you all love this knife as much as I do, um, the looks of it, because if you like the way it looks, um, you are going to absolutely love how it carries and how it holds, how it feels in hand and how it cuts. Uh, it is, you know, it's, it's wickedly sharp. Yeah. It comes wickedly sharp from him, but I did give it a slight and that recurve will help in cutting. It will help in, uh, all manner of, uh, you know, cutting chore. And then as the years go by and you sharpen and you use that belly more and more, um, you'll be able to sharpen that area that you use more and it will maintain its beautiful shape, uh, because that, little bit of extra belly on that recurve there. Uh, as it sharpens away, you'll still maintain that nice bowie shape and you'll still have a great belly. Uh, I'm talking about your grandkids. When your grandkids are using this and they're sharpening it down, they can say, once this was a recurve, but now it's a perfectly straight bowie. Uh, my granddad used this. My grand grandma used this, you know, all of her days. And now it's come down to me through my father. 
And three generations later, it's a perfectly shaped Bowie. Anyway, that's all. I just, I just, I just went down future memory lane for the Nova one. I, I really am excited about this. And uh, hopefully there are Nova twos, threes, and fours with different uh, blade shapes and different color micarta handles. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can do that. All right. Coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at a bunch of stories in Knife Life News. Stick around. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at theknifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at theknifejunkie.com slash shop. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the First Knife Junkie from with the Kaiser. Knife Life Now, Kaiser news. has something else I'm really excited about, uh, which we talked about last week, but that's the new Damned Designs Tonto button lock. That looks wicked cool. Uh, but Kaiser has an in-house design team as well, and they do some pretty cool stuff too. This new one, uh, though, uh, the name, I think they're running out of names, the Kaiser Spot. Uh, I don't know how they arrived at that for this beautiful, sleek EDC knife. This thing is designed in-house. It's got a, uh, I'm going to quote Ben Schwartz from Knife News here. It's got a low-slung, sweeping, modified Warncliffe with a harpoon swedge. Uh, to me, that just translates into a beautiful blade. Actually, that blade reminds me of a slenderized version of the uh, the Scorpion from Off-Grid Knives. Uh, a similar a similar shape. It's a shape I love. It's sort of a clip point, sort of a drop point, sort of a low slung sweeping modified worn cliff with a harpoon swedge. That's a 2.91 inch blade, 154 cm, uh, a blade steel you know that I love. Uh, bearing flippers. Um, it'll come with black aluminum handles or this, a slightly lighter but luscious black and red lava. G10. It's available now. Very cool looking knife. I like the stuff they do in house. Uh, I am not sure if that's a removable flipper because I think it is uh, because I think I've seen a picture of uh, the black one without the flipper tab. Jim, would you scroll down, please, sir? We're going to do this live. Uh, so also this thing is 4.5 ounces. On it. Yeah. See this? No flipper tab. I think this is one of those Kaiser removable flipper tabs, but it doesn't doesn't make mention of it in this article. A beautiful, beautiful knife. I'm looking forward to checking out the spot. All right, next up. This is one I meant to get to on Thursday Night Knives. We ran out of time. Uh, this is a new limited edition knife called the Makani from We Knives. Uh, this is coming from a Russian designer, Anton uh, uh, Kachenkov, I'm going to say. Um, and uh, he is of Steel Will Tasso fame. That has that cool lock, the ant lock on it uh this is a very interesting looking knife uh it's sort of a worn cliff with a belly um but uh a limited edition that's 3.6 inches of 20 cv blade steel looks hand hand rubbed to me um 4.5 ounces right hand only and they're gonna be five <coughs> excuse me five versions all with different inlays uh some of them like the one you see there has that uh, carbon fiber with aluminum foil or copper uh sort of uh, warped into it i think is cool uh but all contoured handles and inlays something about the blade though i gotta say that fuller rubs me wrong i said it's hand rubbed uh but that fuller uh i don't know it looks it looks like a mistake to me and now i don't mean to cast aspersions on uh, mr Kachen kachenko's design uh, he actually has some great design chops just to my eye that fuller is wrong but uh, on the whole, a beautiful knife. I love the uh, silhouette of it and uh, look for that to come. Again, limited edition Wee Knife Makani. Uh, next up, as I mentioned earlier, Jack Wolf Knives is about to release their February 2023 um, knife. That'll be in two days on Friday, the 17th. The beautiful Javelina Jack. It is a sow belly, super ergonomic. That's something we've uh, learned about from Jack Wolf Knives and Ben Belkin's designs. He has stripped all of the classical designs down to just one blade, and doing that allows you to fully appreciate those ergonomics 
without uh, without having them obscured by another blade. Here's a sow belly with a secondary blade, and you don't get that benefit of the ergonomics because you feel the spine of the blade. Uh, this new one, the Javelina Jack, comes in four different carbon fibers, uh, two of them from camo carbon and two, two of them from fat carbon, just makers of exquisite carbon fibers. Um, one of them, I think, is in, I think fat carbon is in Lithuania. Is that right? And camo carbon is in America. Um, uh, so yeah, Friday, tomorrow, uh, the day after tomorrow, Friday, the 17th, authorized dealers will have this. This is S90V. That California clip is a full height hollow grind S90V. That's 2.83 inches. And this is their um, second knife with S90V, which is pretty sweet to have in the collection because now I have two knives with S90V. Uh, so yeah, that's an announcement for that. Look at the look at the uh, authorized dealers for that. Uh, next, I have uh, the Kershaw man. Man, Kershaw is uh, re exciting me now. They haven't done that in a while. I guess the Lucha was the last thing that came out. I was like uh, very excited about and and bought and enjoy. Uh, they have four models out in 2023 featuring their Duralock, which is the their answer to the. Uh, ambidextrous bar lock look at these beauties i'm just gonna real quickly uh uh talk about those uh let's see that one second in oh, let's see well let's start from the first one that's the iridium uh let's see well let's go from here yeah okay the covalent like the covalent bond beautiful i love the look of this uh that's a polymer handle uh three point five inch d2 on bearings with the uh, lock with the Dura lock. I got to get used to that Dura lock. And then down uh, below that, uh, this one's in G10. That's the monitor, monitor like the lizard or the thing that you watch TV on. Uh, I really like that blade shape, sort of a, a low slung uh, spear point, almost has a Warren Cliff vibe. Nice swale on the back. That's also D2. I'm loving seeing that they're getting rid of the 8CR13 for their budget models d2 and g10 uh next the heist love the look of that blade uh the the heist is polymer and a 3.1 inch blade with d2 love that and then lastly this one the iridium is very exciting i've seen a lot of people uh excited about this one uh this is an aluminum handle uh so you know it's gonna sound cool when you clickety clack that thing open with the dura lock uh 3.5 inches of d2 beautiful spear point with a swedge interesting swedge and 3.8 ounces and also if you look at the tail end of it it's got a really cool little lanyard loop of uh anodized uh, gold or bronze very very cool looking uh so yeah I i'm pretty excited uh i i will end up getting one of these i'm not sure what i right now i can only afford to buy Thing, folders that is that I think I'm going to carry. So um, I'll have to think about that. But uh, seeing a lot of other people's videos about these, it's exciting because a lot of good news uh, coming from Kershaw these days. Okay. Lastly, Lon Humphrey, custom knife maker of outdoor knives, beautiful stuff. He forges his knives and uh, he's known for uh, a few of a few famous models up. Uh, chief among them is the black tail. So this new one is his Nesmuk blacktail he's using the blacktail handle that's the that's a, a handle that has now appeared on three knives and he's giving it this beautiful fat bellied nesmuk blade i just think this thing is gorgeous uh so what is he calling this he's calling this the i think it's the nesmuk yes it's the nesmuk blacktail 3.5 uh 3.75 inch blade that's 52 100 forged by hand uh, Nesmuk blade on the black tail handle. That's phenolic, uh, or here, what's featured, you can get phenolic handles, or what's featured here is uh, one of the many kinds of woods you can get. And this in particular is called, uh, I'm seeing storm maple, which is cool because that is wood stabilized and uh, taken from a tree that fell in his, uh, in Lon Humphrey's uh, property during a storm. So that comes right from, his land, which is pretty cool. Each one hand forged. Check it out if that's your thing. Lon Humphrey's new Nesmuk uh, Blacktail. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look uh, at a couple of new knives in the state of the collection. Uh, two of them from overseas and one very much from this uh, part of the world. And then my top 15 
USA made folders. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I had a uh, late night Amazon just spur of the moment purchase laying in bed uh, right before I turned off the light. It was a couple of days ago and I was like, I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and turn off the light and forget about it. And then they're going to show up and I'm going to be excited uh, because it's some uh, it's for the next knife that I did that whole thing. Uh, but I tacked this on. So this is the Senkut Watuaga. Watuaga. How do you pronounce that? Watuaga. Or Watuga. I've heard a lot of people say Watuga. Uh, so it's beautiful. I could not resist this. Uh, ever since um ever since Stasa 23 came black from Blade came back from Blade Show with one of the early uh one of the prototypes of this, I've been excited to get my hands on this. Uh it is a it's about 3.6 inch um or I'm sorry, 3.5 inch. Yeah, um, 3.5 inch Warncliffe blade with a nice um, choil there and a thumb swale and an opening notch or fuller and the uh, really nicely contoured handle with the double finger partitions that are way uncommittal. They don't they don't bother me at all or noncommittal. And then this excellent button lock. So uh, Senkut Civivi has really done a great job with their button locks and this is definitely no exception. I've been very excited to get my hands on this. So I threw this on there. This is D2 blade steel, threw this on the order. And, uh, and it's kind of curious because I've been actually thinking of getting rid of knives like this out of my collection. But then I realized, Bob, you've been saying that for a long time. So that's not happening. So keep the ones that are really special. And then if you have some that are not so special, get rid of those, but stop laying down these bold declarations. Like I'm getting rid of all of my, you know, you're not doing that. So I, I just had to get this one. Um, who knows uh, what its fate will be, but I, I think it's going to get a lot of carry. Um, it's just, it looks good. It feels good in hand. It's a very thin slicey D2 blade and it's, it's fidgety. So I think this one's going to get a lot of carry. The watch, what, what, Watauga. <laughs> or oh, I can hear you all yelling at your screen, your uh, preferred pronunciation, but I prefer the Watauga. All right, next up. This is the reason I was on Amazon. I, I had seen uh, this knife in a Neves Knives video, and I thought, uh, wow, I love this knife so much in its large form. I need to get the small version. In the large form, it's this, the Civivi Praxis. Uh, mine is in this beautiful rosewood with the black uh, blade. So when I heard they came out with a mini, I was fascinated. And here it is, the mini Civivi Praxis in G10 and uh, black, black wash D2. Uh, this I got for my wife, knowing that, you know, I, I, I really wanted to see it and experience it. But this is more my wife's speed due to the size. Um, it, it's a perfect, perfect size. It's, it gives you a full finger choil. Uh, just because it's smaller doesn't mean it's going to give you a smaller choil. You got a full choil, and then that's a three-inch blade. Uh, it's really kind of cute. <laughs> I hate to put it that way, but that's the word that comes to mind. It's kind of cute because I find this to be a, a, a really nice and beautiful knife. It's a great knife to carry and use. It's a, it's a large but light knife with a lot of different uses. And this, it just seemed like I, I had to get it. So I got this, gave it to my wife, and then very quickly said, uh, can I borrow it back for the show? She's like, ah, sure. Uh, but I, uh, the cool thing is, is I gave it to her. She immediately opened it up. Oh, cool. And she loved the sticker. And then she pulled this out, immediately took out her her uh, Sinkovich Kershaw from her waistband and put this in. I was like, I love that girl. Uh, so that's the Civivi Praxis Mini Praxis uh, available now. By the way, it's 30 bucks. 30 bucks. It's an awesome deal. 
um, I highly, highly recommend it. I mean, you know, what can I say? It's a Civivi. It's amazingly designed and made. And at 30 bucks, man, it's a steal. Lastly, this is a, a Christmas present from my brother. My parents just came into town and they brought this with me. He forgot to give it to me back then. Uh, so here it is. And it's another one for the Wall of Fame. This is a World War II era Corman's Bolo from uh, for uh, a World War II Corman's Bolo used in the South Pacific um, or created for for that. And now in doing a little bit of research, uh, I found that these knives um, here. Well, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I'll tell you what the knife is for, but I have to show the sheath. It is stunning. Sergeant W.H. Harding. And uh, my wife, uh, who does a lot of invest investigatory stuff, I'm going to see if she can find um, a Sergeant W.H. Harding in the U.S. Marine Corps. And this is pretty. First of all, I, I have a couple of things behind me uh, that has inscriptions in it that people have done, uh, you know, from World War II or whatever. People have personalized their their sheaths. But this one is just a step above. It's beautiful. Um, it, I'm not sure what the person used, but they used a small thing and they just pressed, 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 pressed and got that, uh, got those beautiful letters. On the back side, we see some much less beautiful kind of scrawl carved in there. And this to me, I can't tell if that's 1916 CRG or if that's 1976 and it's it's uh, the the grandson of you know uh, the of Sergeant Harding who had this and he scrawled his name in I, I can't tell, uh, but there's more uh, here scrawl you know where someone took a sharp knife and and tried to scrawl their name in there it looks like Traeger or Trailer or something, uh, but it's interesting this sheath just has so much history in it from its first owner to it looks like it had two other owners. Uh, I'm hoping that that's family members who scrawled their names in it. Um, but it has come to me through a, a long, you know, circuitous route. And uh, thanks to my brother. Uh, I love that about, I love these historical knives for that reason. Um, this is a very heavy package. And this was hanging from the belt of a corpsman. That's a, a U.S. Marine Corps medical officer or medical man out there in the field. This is a damn heavy piece of kit. And imagine all the other stuff that 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 person is carrying on a heavy web belt on heavy canvas uniform. You know, they didn't have the high tech garbage we have today. That's super light and sweat wicking and all that. They had they had some pretty uh, rudimentary gear and heavy, heavy, heavy gear, uh, which is just amazing to me. This hung from the belt here. Uh, here is the knife. That is a Corman's Bolo. So Bolo, uh, obviously, well, maybe not so obviously, but is is that term was picked up during the occupation of the Philippines, uh, where everyone there carries a Bolo. So the Bolo machete, there's a Bolo behind me right here. This is the Collins machete Bolo, um, also for my brother, also a similar use. But this was for Corman to uh, sort of make a path through the jungle uh, through vegetation, um, uh, saplings, vegetation, and it has a sort of a spoon bill with a, with a swedge for digging. Um, you know, so if you're trying to get a stretcher through the jungle with an injured man on it, uh, this is the tool you have on your hip to sort of clear the path. And the, everything about that scenario, uh, carrying a stretcher through the jungle with a wounded soldier during war, with all of that heavy gear on, and this is your tool to clear the path. All of that just makes me feel like so incredibly grateful to those people, to, to those men who are out there fighting that war and and using this tool, using those implements. So Sergeant W.H. Harding, wherever you are, thank you, sir, and I will take good care of this, uh, of your Corman's Bolo uh, machete. This thing is incredible, and I think... I think maybe it was Sergeant Harding who who altered the handle a little. Like uh, it seems like uh, right here where where you would want a pin, more of a pinch point, it's been filed down or worn down. And um, there's a lot of personalized 
uh, you know, details to this. I, who knows how old this leather fob is? Probably not that old, actually. Um, but anyway, a beautiful gift, Vic. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, just these these kind of knives are uh, access a different part of me than than the than the Civivis and the and the Chris Reeve knives. You know, this it's a different thing. It's our history right here. Uh, so you can you can kind of uh, get in touch with history through knives. Love that. All right. Next up, let's talk about the United States some more. Let's talk about some of my absolute favorite USA made folders. Now, I have a I, I went through my collection and I realized proudly that I have a good bunch of them. Uh, knives not only designed by Americans, but but made in America. and. Um, that's exciting, and and I like that part of my collection. Um, there's something um, that the Civivis access, uh, 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 sort of a prurient uh, uh, aspect, but these uh, USA-made knives are are soul sustaining. Oh God, that sounds so stupid. All right, now, all right. First up on this list, the Demco AD20. All right, now this was made in in uh, Wampum, PA, by by uh by Andrew Demko and his brother John <laughs> forgive me for having that mind lock there and uh so John Demko does play a large role in in uh in putting these together and uh and Andrew Demko of course designs and makes these beauties uh I just saw uh um, let's see knife center is going to have a whole bunch of these coming as is blade HQ um, and they just look beautiful. They got a new blade shape on there, a slicer blade shape that looks really cool. Um, this one is in this beautiful maroon my um, G10. Uh, but what I love about this knife is that it is really, really stout, and very, very sturdy, very sharp. It's a great, great work knife. I mean, it's about as good as it gets. It's very stout behind the uh, behind the edge. It's not going to be the best apple slicer in the world, but it's not going to be the worst either. It's it's got a very robust grind, but also a very robust uh, blade stock with the excellent shark lock. Plus, it's fidgety all day long, and um, you know this is just one of those knives that if it's in your pocket, you're you're good to go for for whatever reason. So I, I love the looks of this thing too, and the and the and the whole experience of opening and closing it. Um, so. Uh, everything about this knife. And I guess I can say that straight down the board. Next up is one from a company I don't talk too much about, but Benchmade. And for me, from Benchmade, it's the um, Bug Out. I absolutely love this knife. Uh, this has been carried way more than I ever talk about on this show. Uh, it's done a lot of waistband carry. It's done a lot of pajama carry. It's done a lot of summer carry. Um, the only place I won't carry it is to the pool because I tend to put my knives in my pocket after I get out of the pool and that bleaches my carta. And I earned that patina on these Allen Putnam aftermarket scales. I got this uh, right after the, the um, you know, before the Benchmade had its own variety coming from or before Benchmade offered variety in this knife and before the aftermarket was there with all the different scales you could get. Um, I got these Putnam scales and put on the um, the Snaggletooth MF uh, to auto pocket deploy it because uh, it's done a lot of back pocket carry as uh, on the left side as well as um, in my winter jacket. So I just like the option of being able to pull it out and have it immediately deployed. A great pocket clip. I have I bought another one of these pocket clips to put on the next knife. Um, to replace a substandard clip there. Just a great overall knife. I'm so glad they they came out with this knife. I wouldn't mind checking out the bailout and some of their uh, other um, offerings kind of in this super thin, super light range. Okay, next up, this is the knife I was just alluding to. Uh, this is the Ritter Hogue Mini RSK Mark One. <sighs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> the... Uh, RSK stands for Ritter Survival Knife. Uh, Doug Ritter, you know him for uh, Knife Rights. He's the head of, of Knife Rights. And also the Ritter Griptilian. His knife, uh, the idea being a survival folder with a super premium steel on an inexpensive 
uh, chassis was first uh, OEM'd by Benchmade in the um, Ritter Griptilian. And then when uh, Benchmade stopped doing OEM work altogether uh, five or six years ago, um, uh, Doug Ritter landed at Hogue. And man, what a, what a great landing that was because they have turned this knife up. They, they have, they're using their own um, ABLE lock that stands for ambidextrous bar lock enhanced. Um, so basically their version of the axis lock and, uh, in my opinion, an excellent, excellent job. They have fully contoured G10 handles in this case, G mascus. So you see different layers there and that beautiful radial pattern coming out from the, um, coming out from the pivot there, just beautiful execution and a little slightly bit longer handle than a griptilian. So you get a full full grip on this thing. And then that beautiful, broad, high, flat grind, uh, ground drop point blade. Just a beautiful, beautiful knife. And uh, I had the large one. I ended up uh, giving that to my brother. Or who did I? I gave that to someone. And I don't think I gave it to my brother, though. Um, I got to remember where that thing is. Uh, I love this, lo this small version. This was sent to me by Doug Ritter himself. So it means a lot as well as I love the way it looks. And to be perfectly frank, this is a model I only will probably ever carry in the small version. It's just how I appreciate that design best. Next up, from a great American maker and a great guy who makes these in his garage. I mean, I'm sure he's upgraded a little bit, uh, but this is a, a guy who does amazing stuff uh, all by himself. And the feedback of his fans. This is American Blade Works, and the man I'm talking about, uh, uh, Michael Martin, is uh, the proprietor and maker and designer. This is the American Blade Works Model 1 version 5. He landed on the version 6, and that's where all, um, all improvements were complete, basically. So he uh, came out with a version 1 of this in aluminum and sent it around got a lot of feedback and made changes and then did that with every iteration of this knife getting um getting the feedback from uh from knife users and and just kind of dialing in the design this one is so nice i i really uh this one is a, a really comfortable user this to me it reminds me a little bit of a of a bench made or not a bench made a um in the handle of a southern um it has that sort of just neutral comfort. Um, and then it's got a full height S35 uh, VN flat ground blade that's just really sharp. Mine, uh, and then it has a, 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 a um, titanium clip here. Mine has uh, the blasting on the blade. So that has always, like this is not a drop shutter. Uh, the version sixes are definitely drop shutters. And the version fives that I've held that don't have the blasting drop shut um i don't know could it be that i haven't carried this enough well, i've had this for a few years now so i just think it is what it is and what it is is an awesome edc knife uh, these come in micarta uh, liner lock or uh, titanium frame locks uh, i think they also come in g10 now all right so that's the american blade works model one i would love to have uh, uh michael back on the show he's a great guy uh I had him on the coverage of Blade Show 2021 with his family, who is all charming and very, very nice, too. Uh, next up, another great group of people putting out a great knife uh, and some others, but this is the only one I have from them. And that's Three Rivers Manufacturing, TRM. This is the Atom. This is a black-washed Atom. And this is a uh, factory reject, not reject, factory second, uh, I had one that was not a factory second, and um, but I sold that one because this one is way more special to me, and uh, because this one was um, it wasn't given to me, but it was sold to me at a great price with a lot of extras, including these G Carta scales from GL Hansen and Son uh, by TRM by Marianne at TRM, just a wonderful lady and a great businesswoman, and. Um, running a great, great knife company with her husband, Les. TRM, see those two dots next to USA? 
those two dots mean second, factory second. And that's because of this right there. See that little tiny blemish in the, uh, in the coating of the blade? That's why this is a factory second. They could have easily sold this thing at a premium price and uh, and gotten it and uh, not called a factory second on this, but they did. And that's what I love about companies like this. They have they have to maintain their reputation. Something like that could tank their reputation, you know, uh, with 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 how knife people are. You know, I, I shouldn't put it that way, but how you know you spend money on a knife and these are not inexpensive. You want to know um that you're getting you know the the best product you can from them so in any case that does not bother me this is a cool dlc it, it it's it's almost hard to see it's like the predator you look at it and it's like is it shiny is it dlc is it black is it silver i just can't tell um and then these beautiful green gl hansen and sun scales uh she also gave me some purple and green ones uh, where the dominant color is purple and the stripes are green. And we gave those away uh, during our birthday bash. Uh, when when Jim and I, we have our August birthdays. That was two years ago now, Jim. Uh, we haven't aged a day since, actually. Uh, next up from, you know what? Hang on. Before I move on, I just have to say, almost everyone I've talked about so far has been on the podcast. Andrew Demko was on episode 20 and episode 118. Doug Ritter, 338, and others. He's been on a bunch of times. American Blade Works. Michael Martin's been on the show. All you got to do is go to thenifejunkie.com slash 148, and you can hear that episode. Uh, same thing with TRM. They were on episode 62 or on thenifejunkie.com slash 240. So that's, that's really a quick way to go and check out all these podcasts. Um, so I will mention it from here on out as I mention the knife, like this one. Uh, from Tactile Knives, uh, we had um, Matthew Miller, Michael Miller from Tactile Knife Company come on the show, episode 62, or no, I'm sorry, episode 216 and episode 360. So you can hear all about uh, the process of going from a pen company making tactile turn pens, those beautiful things, to making these beautiful things, the Tactile Knife Company, uh, and knives like this, the Rock Wall, or their slip joint, the Bear. And uh, and now they have two other gorgeous ones out. They're doing their version of the access lock and they have a fixed blade out uh, from um, Matthew Christensen. So just doing incredible things down there in Texas. Uh, so this knife is 100 percent made in the United States and actually 100 percent made by a tactile knife company, except when this was made. Now, I'm not sure if this has changed since then. Actually, no, it has not changed. Actually, I asked recently. Uh, the stop pin is made by a different company and something else. But the screws, the clip, and everything else is made in their shop. They turn their own screws on their on their Swiss lathes, and they do all this beautiful micro milling on their handles uh, on their mills. Just great. Man, they are, they are expert craftsmen uh, with mills and lathes. And uh, they have designed beautiful uh, works of cutlery and then have done these great collaborations now uh, with with Richard Rogers and um, and Matthew Christensen most recently. Uh, so this the rock wall is a three inch blade. Beautiful. Uh, this is what is this? I think this is this one is 20 CV and I'm not sure what they. Oh, no, this is XHP. And then they they moved to 20 cv uh this is a prototype a production prototype um and uh, let's see and you can tell because they put it somewhere in here it says it somewhere anyway just a great great blade meant uh designed to fit in a wrigley's chewing gum case so very small carry package but a very capable uh full grip three inch bladed knife beautiful thing and i think it's a gorgeous blade too all right next up from a company uh from Shreve, Ohio, from Ohio, my home state, or at least where I, where I came from. I'm not there anymore, but my my heart is still in Ohio. Is the uh, Chris Reeve knives XM24 Warncliffe? Now I have uh, the 18 Warncliffe, and I have a couple of other um, hinderer knives, but to me, the XM24 just takes the cake. The thing I like about the XM24 uh, is that it's a full four-inch blade. It's got the super sturdy 
uh, frame lock, uh, titanium frame lock construction. You can get it in a slim down version, but I do like the big, um, the full thickness. Uh, they also come in a fat version, which is weird to me, but, um, the, so I love this full thickness, full size. Plus the reason I like the four inch blade, not only am I a four inch blade, um, you know, that's what I prefer, but the length of the blade allows his designs, his Warncliffe that we're looking at and his Bowie to fully, to fully express themselves. Um, I feel like the worn cliff on the XM 18 looks a little short. Uh, whereas on the three inch XM 18, it, it, it actually looks as good as it does on the 24. And I feel the same way about the Bowie, even though they don't have a three inch Bowie yet, but I feel like the, the three and a half inch Bowie just isn't enough a anyway. So I guess you could say, any Chris, uh, any uh, hinderer knife uh, would fall in this category for me because I love the company and I love that they're American made. I love that they're from Ohio, um, you know, and they just build these rock solid, super sturdy um, knives. Love it. And I love all of it. But my favorite is this one. Just look at it. I mean, and if you're only listening, it just does have the most dramatic worn cliff shape out there especially with the choil i do find the choil is necessary to fully express this shape uh, i have the no choil uh three and a half inch version and it's not quite the same all right next up is the less george vcep um this is the uh, the mid-tech version of his rock eye the full custom version now the rock eye has has been uh, is now done by protech in the automatic versions and they are beautiful large and small the sbr is also his but i always uh since the moment i saw this knife i was in love with its design and was kind of on the hunt for one of these for a long time finally found one from a guy in singapore took six weeks to get here i thought it was lost in the mail i was convinced i was had um but uh just beautiful action just slow rolling this out i know he does flippers now on bearings uh, but I love this silky smooth um, washer action. Plus, it's beautiful to look at, beautiful in hand with that um, perfect neutral grip and then a drop point blade and thumb ramp to beat the band. Love this knife in all of its uh, uh, incarnations. All right, next up is an American classic at this point and one against which so many are judged and that is the Sabenza 21 in this case. Um, I, and I I don't have the 31, but I, if I did, I would still probably say the 21 because the 31 incorporates some great innovations that appear in other knives uh, from Chris Reeve knives. So to me, this 21 is the, is the um, quintessential Chris Reeve knife. Again, super smooth washer action. I won't be able to do that with my left hand though because this one is only a right-handed knife. Um, this is, there is something about this knife that no other knife feels like, uh, with the, uh, with these micarta inlays when it's open, when it's in hand, it just, it's, it feels like a solid, it almost feels like a fixed blade. It has that solidity to it and, and that je ne sais quoi. And I don't mean, I'm not even saying that to, to sound, uh, ironic really that, that I don't know what je ne sais quoi. I just don't know what it's like. It, it, it is more than the sum of its parts and, and this, and, and its parts are exquisite and how it's put together. So this is, this knife is worthy of all of its hype and all of its cost and more. Next up is the Spyderco military. And man, I I've been carrying this one a bit lately because I'm so excited for the military too, which I have already put my $5 down um, on, on blade HQ for their pre-order. Oh, I'm so excited for this. I, th we've been waiting for this, or I have, for ages. You know, they came out with the with the paramilitary too a long time ago, and and so many versions, and it's so popular. And they came out with the three, the para three, which is smaller. Uh, but they left they left the military to languish uh, in in tip down um, world, tip down liner lock world. So I'm so glad that they're updating this to uh, the compression lock and um, compression lock and uh, four-way positionable clip. It's about damn time. And uh, I don't mean to sound 
ungrateful, but it is about time. The weird thing is, is that they're, they've gone to all this trouble to redesign and come out with the paramilitary too, uh, as they should have years ago, but they're still, it's still going to be with S 30 V steel, which to me is a little bizarre. Why not? Why not just throw us a bone and put 15 more V's in there and give us S 45 VN. Um, it would feel like an upgrade, like the rest of the design. Is it an upgrade? I don't know, but that's optics. And I think that that would probably not cost them that much more and would be cool. Next up is the ProTech TR3. I love ProTech. I was talking about them before with the Rockeye. That was the first ProTech I ever got. The first uh, upscale automatic was the Rockeye years ago at this point. Um, every ProTech I've ever held, I've loved. Um, and I have a TR2, a TR3, and, uh, and the Rockeye. But this to me is the is the cream. This is the cream of the crop. It is the perfect size. It is the perfect weight. It is the perfect ergonomics. Everything about this knife, the TR3, is perfect. This one is in 154 cm uh, with the standard grooves, which feel really good in hand. There, your fingers wrap around and dig into those grooves to great effect. Awesome jimping. I love the way milled aluminum feels. The way Protec and Microtec do it. Um, so great texture jimping here. Uh, you got a standard Emerson slash Benchmade uh, three screw clip. And uh, this is the SWAT version, TR4 SWAT or TR3 SWAT. This is before the operators came out with the operator versions are all black with the little tritium insert. So in the dark, when you have your knife, you can like look at it. And say, oh, there it is. Of course, that's not why it's just to look cool. But great kick. These things kick. They don't slap out like Benchmade autos do. Uh, in my experience, they they snap out really crisply. Um, the one that I wanted when I bought this is the one with the fish scales, which is really cool too, fish scale milling. Uh, but now that I have this, I, I think this is a pattern I can live with. I think the fish scale milling was cool when I saw it, but I'm like, I'm not a Navy SEAL. You know what I mean? Like that's what you'd get if you're like, a Navy dude or, or, or have a special aquatic attachment or maritime attachment. I do not. So this one works for me. All right. Next up. Uh, this was my favorite and bestest knife for a good while. And that is the ZT 0452 CF, a, a silhouette, uh, a profile, uh, that is very emblematic, very recognizable from, Sink, uh, from Dmitry Sinkovich, a Belarusian designer and one of my absolute favorite knife designers out there of folders. This is such an elegant beauty and it's a 4.25 inch blade. So it's a nice big knife, but nice and slender. You got the titanium frame lock on one side. You've got the, um, you know, the sort of basket weave carbon fiber on this side uh, that I tolerate, but that's not, that's my least favorite kind of carbon fiber, but Nice and light. It feels so good in hand. And you've got this forward jimping that I love. It's, it's sort of the kind that you grip and pull back on, uh, on that downward slope there. Just stunningly beautiful. Great action. This was one of my first uh, S35VN blades, I remember. Um, just great action, but not as drop shutty as uh, some of the later knives. Now, I have heard it said that... Uh, zero tolerance peaked with this knife. Now, I don't, I, I wouldn't say they did, but I would say this is definitely one of their highest points uh, because it is tough, 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 like their bigger, thicker, um, more imposing designs, but it's got this slender, elegant assassin's look, you know, to it um, that I, I just love. I, I, you know, a Sinkovich custom, folder would be something that i would love or or you know sinkovich with shirogorov some of those designs are just out, out of this world next up a knife that has gotten some really really serious action and gets a lot of carry especially whenever i go on a road trip is the microtech socom elite i absolutely adore this knife and and would love to get more of them in my collection. I only have this one. And then I have the SOCOM Bravo from Reich Knives, which I love, uh, but not nearly as much as this. I love the aluminum. Uh, like I said, the milling in the aluminum feels great on the texturing. It has a slight taper. 
uh, when you look at it in this dorsal aspect from here to uh, from the from the from the um, thumb ramp to the pommel sort of tapers and you've got and it, and it also tapers when you turn it uh, this way on its flat side you got a um, glass breaker that was the first uh, glass breaker I ever had that's why this became my car knife my road trip knife um, and a actually an awesome clip uh, for tip down this is one of the two knives I excuse it you saw the military this is the other one um, but the way they do this clip is great because it accommodates slanted pockets that little that little cutout uh, for tightening and and loosening the pivot also allows you to um, uh, snugly uh, nestle that down over the slanted seam of like a khaki or military pocket uh, great knife first knife i ever had on bearings and i didn't even know it i was like how can this knife be so impossibly smooth um, that was before kind of the bearing craze uh, they were kind of ahead of the game. This is 2013 produced. So they were around, but not as common as they are today. Uh, bearing pivots, that is. Such a great knife. I want more. I want, 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 want. Next up and penultimate in this list is uh, my probably my favorite Emerson. I, I mean, I, I bounce around, but just judging by, this is the one I put in my pocket the most, and that's the sax. Uh, I love that that classic viking sax uh profile on the blade it is extremely sharp i did break the tip on this one and send it to jared knee for repair he repaired the tip and put a screaming sharp edge on this already sharp chisel chisel ground blade well it's a chisel edge blade it's a v ground blade Let's see chisel edge v blade there we go nice big wave for a pocket deployment and a ergonomics that i would say are uh, um, among the least comfortable for emerson but that's saying a lot because the emerson ergos are so comfortable and the reason i say that it's a double finger partition that i don't usually go for but this this one isn't so bad it, it's not like the the contigo really uh re really pushed it i feel this one not so bad uh, but yeah, I do carry this one quite a bit. And that blade is a great utility blade. I know a lot of people do not like chisel edges, uh, but they cut amazingly. They do track uh, a little differently through material, especially if the whole blade is chisel ground. Uh, but it takes about a microsecond to readjust and, and get the hang. So a, a great tactical knife and a great utility knife made uh, in the United States in California. IA. And uh, I don't know, I know he's moved to Colorado, but I don't think he moved the company. I'm not sure about that, actually. But I know that this one was made in California. All right, last on this list and holds a very special place in my heart. And you'll see why. It has my logo emblazoned on the handle. But also just an incredible knife from one of my favorite knife designers, Bill Harsey, and one of my favorite knife companies, Spartan Blades. Uh, this is the Spartan Harsey Folder, just a super, super stout uh, titanium frame lock with, uh, this has an S35 VN blade. I know now they're onto S45 VN. And uh, after my interview with Curtis Iovito, which was uh, episode 152, he uh, said, send me your, send me your knife. I will put your logo on it. And so I did. And uh, it made me so happy. It was such a nice thing to do. And it really, you know, I will obviously never get rid of this. Uh, probably wouldn't anyway, because it's a Spartan Harsey folder. Uh, but uh, trying to get my camera to focus is is being difficult right now. But a great, great, super smooth bearing, uh, not bearing, super smooth washer action. This knife distills out basically everything from every other knife I've shown, especially the Sebenza and the VSEP and um, also the Hinderer and just, it, it has the feel of all of those knives in one. Just outstanding, no weight reduction on that, on those handles, just a solid, gorgeous, four inch bladed knife designed by Bill Harsey and produced in North Carolina by Spartan Blades. Love these USA made folders. All right, thank you one and all, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for watching this uh, top 15 USA made folders list. I uh, love them. I would love to add to them, but 
these could hold me the rest of my life, obviously. And then the lives of my progeny, no doubt. All right, be sure to join us on uh, tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on uh, YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. And of course, join us on Sunday for the uh, Sunday interview show. You can also download us to your favorite podcast app, all listed over here. Uh, and now uh, also uh, keep your eyes peeled for the Nova One pre-order. All you do is go to thenifejunkie.com slash Nova One, and that'll take you right to the pre-order page. Uh, appreciate it if you do. I'd love to hear what you think about the knife, and um, I've been loving carrying it. And, well, I hope you do too. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.